right guys got my fuel system ready to go on this thing I'm gonna start putting it together show you what I got going on I ended up going with a Holly red electric fuel pump since I'm running I'm just running a little Holly 600 carburetor on that thing so no need for like a blue pump or anything this will suit my knees just fine uh, cool thing about that you don't have to run a regulator with it it's got like a preset that comes with so I'm not even gonna run a regulator I am gonna run uh, some 6AN braided fuel line so that should be pretty cool uh, nice and clean looking I got pretty sure I got all the fittings I'm gonna need for it and everything so a bunch of female and male ends got a couple of fuel filters I read the instructions for the fuel pump. I made my own little diagram, so I'll show you that. I'm gonna come out of the tank, and then uh, this pump recommends a 100 micron filter, just screwed directly to the pump. So that's what I have right here. I just got one of the little Holly 100 micron billet fuel filters. And then there's the pump. And then I'm gonna run a 40, it says to run a 40 micron post filter, and that's what I have right here. Just a little summit. 40 micron filter and then I'm gonna go straight up to the carburetor pretty much I'm not gonna run a return I don't think I'm gonna need to so no sense in overfilling it and I got some cushion clamps to hold the braided line on the frame and stuff so uh, you want to keep this fuel pump as close to the fuel tank as you can and you want to keep it below the fuel tank so I'm about that right on the uh, frame rail and I got some of the assembly lube for the Stainless line Supposedly makes it easier to install. I've never uh, put together any of this stuff, but you know what the heck I'm not scared um, I even got one of these fittings for the carburetor So I just have the little 600 holly and it has this on there to put fuel hose on and this is just an AM fitting with you know a banjo bolt style just to unbolt this one and replace it with that so it look really clean and simple um, yeah, I didn't need any fancy fuel system. This thing is only going to have, I'm, I'm thinking, three to 350 horsepower. Nothing crazy. Doesn't need to be crazy. There should be plenty in this thing. Just wanted to sound really good. So, got the cam I wanted for the sound and some decent head. So, should should run great. That's all I need in it. I'm not trying to build a race truck. So, uh, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is probably take this and... People say to wrap some tape really tight on here and then cut through the tape that way it doesn't get all frayed like this so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and probably put on my first uh, female in and start bolting it up to the sending unit at the fuel tank all right so I got this uh, end of this braided stainless taped up really tight with just some tape I use for masking off stuff for paint and uh, I'm just gonna use you know, a cutoff wheel, I got a new wheel on here. I want to use something that cuts really fast. I'm hoping it just cuts it just real nice and won't fray as much. wrap this and see how it came out all right it seems pretty good um, you can see how it came out of the package I mean real frayed and I taped it really tight and cut it with the cutoff wheel and seems pretty decent I don't see any fraying so uh, got that going I'll start working on getting the fitting on there all right so now I have the length of my fuel line chosen. So uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just show you guys what I did the uh, last time I had, you know, put the fitting on the line. So I know not everybody has a vise, but the vise is super helpful. I'm gonna take apart the fitting. Grab a small flat blade screwdriver. Start putting it around there. 
and you're just kind of pushing over the top of the line into the fitting. Just take your time. You might get to a point where you've got to turn around. Almost there. This one's actually taking a little bit longer than the first one took me. Pretty much gone. Now I'm gonna kind of spin it force it on at the same time and that's it for that part. Looks good. You're never gonna be able to see in there, but that one's on there pretty good. So, I last time, I'm not buying all this fancy AN wrenches and stuff, so I don't care if they get a little marked up, but I put just put a little shop rag around this part last time and put it in the vise like this. Tuck this in, put a little bit of the Earl's lube on there. Not on the, I didn't put any on the threads, I just put the Put it on where it goes into the actual rubber hose part. Just slide it in there nice. And then just get the thread started by hand. It'll go in quite a ways by hand. That way you know it's not cross-threading. And once you can't get it in there by hand anymore, go ahead and take your wrench, put over both the fittings, and turn it in. That is it. I didn't even really mark it up even with the regular wrench on it. On there nice and tight. That one's good to go. All right, so I have my fuel line screwed into my fitting on the sending unit, the supply line. I, could, I put a new sending unit in it, so I had a working gas gauge and everything. And then uh, I put these Earl's compression fittings on the lines. I cut off the fittings that they came with and put those uh, Earl's fittings on there. So there's the new line I just made. And I'll uh, show you into the truck, see where it goes. So then I got it coming down the frame rail right there. I put a couple cushion clamps right there to hold the line on there, not rub against the frame. And then I have my uh, fuel line screwed in to the fuel filter. And then I have a little uh, union piece to screw right into the fuel pump. And I got my fuel pump bolted right there. Drilled some holes in the frame and uh, comes with a little gasket to put behind there. 
mounted that up. Came out really clean. So uh, on these blue fittings, whenever they're flat on the threaded end, I put a little um, like thread sealing on them. So a buddy of mine at work told me that uh, he uses that on his race car. So obviously you don't want to use them on these ends where the black fitting meets that blue fitting because it's rounded and that's what seals. But uh, yeah, it looks great. Start working on make another line and mount my other filter. All right, so I'm finished. I got my other my 40 micron filter ran up there just above the cross member. Went ahead and got the cross members all bolted down for good. Now ran my line up there up the frame, a couple more cushion clamps, and I have some heat wrap stuff that just slides over whatever you want. And I went ahead and put that on there. Protect it against some heat. Get out from under the truck and show you up by the carburetor. So I come up under the, the brake booster area. Right around there. I tried to stay away from the headers the best I could. And I came up here behind the valve cover. And I just used a little piece of aluminum and uh, bolted it there and then used a self-tapping screw to hold my cushion clamp. And uh, it's not like extremely tight, but good enough. And then I had another piece of aluminum I bent into like a S, bolted it down on the intake and used another little self-tapping screw. And then I had, uh, the last fitting I had was one of those little Russell fittings made for this Holley carburetor to replace the little uh, nipple style. So it's all done, all stainless. Uh, I don't need to run a return system, so I didn't do that. And that electric fuel pump doesn't require a uh, regulator. So that wraps it up for the fuel system. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, next, I'm gonna be starting, I'm gonna go back to the body work. So I need to get this cap painted. Uh, see you in the next one. Hey, so I want to say a couple things about my channel before I uh, ended this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching and my friends that are checking these videos out. I appreciate it. It's really cool. Uh, I'm just doing this for fun. I'm not trying to make any money. I, I can't. I don't meet the requirements anyways for YouTube. So I just want to share what I'm doing. And uh, I watch tons of other guys who do the same kind of stuff. And I just figure I start doing it myself. But uh, I just want to say upcoming things besides everything I keep doing to the truck is uh, I have a 2016 Chevy SS four-door that has the LS3 and manual transmission. I uh, plan on putting headers on that, probably putting a camshaft in it and stuff. So whenever I start doing that, I'll uh, make videos of that. And uh, sitting over here in the garage beside my bed is uh, I have a third gen Firebird. That was my first car. and. Uh, Years, years ago, I started building a drag car out of it, but I just decided I want to make a really badass uh, street car. So I have a 5.3 truck block that's new, never been used, and uh, I want to build a 5.3 turbo setup for it. So I want to make something pretty crazy, probably six, 700 tire horsepower, but uh, I'm not going to work on any of that until um, the truck's completed. Uh, it's possible I might do the SS sooner or later first, but... Uh, I'm not going to touch a Firebird until the truck's done. But I just wanted to say that in case anybody wanted to see what else I plan on doing in the future. But uh, thanks again for taking a look. I'll see you in the next one.